Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Seamless, the ultimate sky replacement tool, the April 6th, 2018 release. No, this vi uh, video is going to be for people who have purchased Seamless. This is a kind of an in-depth tu uh, tutorial and we're going to be talking about tips, tricks, and troubleshooting when using Seamless. Now, this version has been completely revamped from the previous version from November 26th, 2017. It is about 10 times lighter and about 10 times faster. So you can get through sky replacements with ease with this release, as opposed to the previous release, which was a little bit slower, a little bit more sluggish and just overall bloated. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we want to do is navigate to our actions panel and I have my actions panel right here. If you don't have it anywhere on your screen, you can go to window and actions and it'll pop right up. Now you can always go ahead and scale this to whatever size you need it to be. I'm going to go ahead and choose that size right there. Now we need an image that's got a pretty dull sky and we're going to replace it. Now, if you're working with say multiple images, let's say you're working with multiple layers, like a, a like an adjustment layer, like you want to do the levels and the curves and all that stuff, you're going to want to use merge visible as opposed to the flatten image variant. Now the difference between these two are pretty simple. Flatten image is basically for single images. Merge visible is for multiple images or multiple layers. Very simple stuff, but we're just going to be working with one layer. So let's go ahead and click that and press play right down here. And it says objective using the magic wand tool shift plus W that is the shortcut key to get to the magic wand tool. Make a selection of the entire sky. Pretty simple stuff so far. Let's go ahead and click stop. And we're going to go ahead and minimize that and shift plus W like we just did right there. Now, before we go in and actually select the sky, we want to go ahead and change our settings in our magic wand toolbar. Now I have it set up to the add to selection button right here. Point sample tolerance. I generally keep at like 25 to 30. So we're going to go ahead and choose 30. It probably won't make a difference because we were at 32 and then contiguous, depending on what your image is. Let's say you had an image with a ton of just trees and branches and all those little, little itty bitty bits you want to get selected. You're going to want to use contiguous turned off. And the reason why you want to do this, is because it will select all the little little bits. Like I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here. If we select this, you see how it's selecting all of this? We didn't even have to select that. We didn't even have to go in and select that at all. It just does it for us. Pretty neat stuff, but if your image is, I'd say heavily edited to where the tones are mainly in the middle, of your histogram, you're going to have a little bit of a tough time with the contiguous method turned off. Um, I'd recommend not editing your images heavily when you go ahead and do a sky replacement as doing so will throw the selection out of whack. So let's go ahead and deselect that and get on with this now. Oh, how you clean that up. I should go back. How you clean this up is very, very simple. You have two options here. You can go ahead and hit shift W, which will give you your uh, quick selection tool. You can just go ahead and put it on subtract from selection. And I usually leave auto enhance turned on, but if you're on a slower computer, leave it off. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And if we ever had anything selected, we can just go ahead and just remove the selection. See how it's removed the selection from right here. We don't want it like that. So we're going to go ahead and go backspace or not backspace undo. So let's go ahead and actually make a selection here. Uh, let's go ahead. Shift W that switches back to the magic wand tool. And again, add to selection point sample tolerance 30 anti aliasing turned on contiguous turned on for simple images like this. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, you, the other option is basically going into quick mask. So you see how we made a selection right there and we press Q to get into quick mask. Basically you can just refine your selection further just by painting. Very simple stuff. I don't use this very often as it's a little bit tedious and a little bit tricky. 
So let's go ahead and get rid of that and deselect that and go ahead and get back to the magic wand tool. And actually, let's get into this. So let's go ahead and make a selection of the entire sky. Perfect. And make sure you have everything selected. Now, I'm not worried about this over here. We can go ahead and get that in a second with the select and mask tool. But everything else is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and go back to our actions palette. And we can go ahead without touching anything, press play. Now it says objective using the refine edge brush, shortcut key R, and select and mask, refine the selection. This basically means refining the trees and or power lines or any other things that are uh, detailed that aren't selected. So let's go ahead and press continue. Now I have my view mode set to on black. I feel like this is the best setting for sky replacements. You can go ahead and choose overlay. It's a traditional kind of thing. Uh, marching ants, not too bad when you want a, cl uh, a clean, cleaned up version, but I, I don't use it particularly often um, because it is, uh, the preview is a little bit inaccurate. Um, of course, we have black and white, also very useful for getting rid of um, blotches or anything that we missed. But we're going to go ahead and stick with on black, which is shortcut key A. And then we're going to zoom in and get our refine edge brush right here. You can go ahead and press shortcut key R. And holding down control and option or alt and left clicking on a Mac or right click. Oh, actually left clicking on a Mac and right clicking on a PC will allow you to scale your brush and make it softer by going up and down left to right but we don't need to be messing with the hardness since we are just doing some simple refining and not brushing so let's go ahead and brush on this stuff see how it's getting all those little itty bitty bits now for an image like this it's simple to just do the contiguous method on and um, just refine it later. But when you have a bunch of trees and stuff like that, it's tedious. You don't want to be doing that. And Seamless is built to where it auto refines the selection that you've made previously. So the rough selection that you've made of the sky will get refined and then you can go ahead and further refine it. Pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and go down here and get this area just like so and that's looking pretty good to me except we got a little bit of this i don't know what that is but let's go ahead and get rid of that perfect press ok and now it says select and place a suitable sky overlay what does this mean it's basically saying select a sky overlay that is going to match the tone in your image so we are uh, editing a twilight we're going to want to pick a twilight sky and since there's not a lot of color cast in this image we can go ahead and use a uh, sky that's fairly neutral so i'm going to go ahead and pick this one so let's go ahead and use this scale that up and move it up just so we can match the horizon in this image to the horizon in the original image without of course going over to where we're spilling some of the original image or not the original image, the sky overlay image into the original image. So I'm going to line it up right there. And you can see if we zoom in, our edges don't look too good. I mean, they're, they are deliverable. They're not too bad, but watch this. If we go ahead and just press the check mark and confirm our transformation, we can move on to where things get actually pretty interesting. So using the dodge and burn tools, shortcut key O, refine the edges of the mask. Okay, let's go ahead and press stop. This is where you want to pay attention as it's really, really helpful when refining your mask. So as you can see, we have a little bit of spillage right here, or a little bit of a, a gradient, so to speak. So if we go ahead and change our range to shadows, and I'm going to choose an exposure of about 20%. We can go ahead and just brush that area and it's, it's, it's removing some of that gray and making it more dark. So it's now black. Now that's going to be a better uh, mask in the long run because 
the sky overlay will not be spilling into those areas. It's going to be more uh, defined. So let's go ahead and move over here just like this. I'm going to go ahead and change this to about 80% and do, 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 do that. Just click on that. And this, of course, can go down to 20%. And that is looking perfect. Now, go ahead and press play again. Do not touch any of the uh, the actions within the action. Uh, just go ahead and press play on the selection. And there you go. It's if you if you use the previous version from November, you you'll see right away that this version is so speedy, so fast, and so well refined. Look at how many layers we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six layers, as opposed to I believe there was more than 10 in the uh, previous version. There was just a bunch of guff in the old version. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna start right here. Look at that. That is impressive. That is seriously impressive. Look at that. There's no white edging or what we call like icy edges. Uh, nothing of that nature is visible at all. That is, it's incredible. So we go here, here, it's looking perfect. Now, if you're ever working with a twilight sky um, and you find that your haze gradient up here is a little bit too strong, just go ahead and bring the opacity down, like zero, 100. I typically will not go down more than 45. And for the reason being is because you want some of that haze in the, in the um, what do they call that, the horizon. You want some of that haze as it's more natural than a crystal clear sky to from the top to the bottom. It doesn't make any sense. So you want a little bit of haze. I'm going to keep this at about 100 since I think that looks pretty damn good. And we're going to go ahead and move on to our merge visible. Now, what does merge visible mean when you've already done all of this? Basically, it means nothing. You can go, we can totally skip this. If you have, let's say multiple layers, you're gonna wanna use the merge visible as I've said before. Um, we can go ahead and skip over this right now. Optional layers or optional actions. Uh, apply new sky overlay, pretty simple stuff. It just goes back in and allows you to replace the sky that you've already selected. So let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna get a dialog box right here. And we can go ahead and pick a sky overlay. Let's say I want something a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and do a sunset. There we go. That's going to be perfect. Oh, that looks, that looks cool. All right, that's looking perfect. Let's go ahead and confirm the transformation. And we can go ahead and zoom in. Perfect, perfect selection. And that's pretty much it for that optional action. Let's go ahead and move on to the second optional action, which is refine extraction mask. This is for when you've done a pretty lousy job of actually selecting the areas that need to be selected. So if you missed like a tree and you want to go back and select it without having to start over, you're going to want to use this. So let's go ahead and press play. And as you can see, it's removed, sorry, it's removed the sky overlay and brought back the original. So let's go ahead and using the refine edge brush short cookie R and select and mask, refine the selection very similar dialog box to what we're used to. So let's go ahead and press continue. And I don't have anything that is really needing to be touched up. So let's go ahead and make something. Let's go ahead and just get rid of that. Now we have a man-made mistake. Uh, we can go ahead and fix that. So I wanna go ahead and just use the refine tool and refine that area. So that's looking good. Press OK. And now you can use the the dodge and burn tools, shortcut EO, to refine the edges of the mask. Pretty familiar stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead, shortcut EO. Go ahead and do this, that, and up here, just like that. Don't want to go too crazy on it. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to 90 just like so and bring it down to 20 
And how I'm changing the, op uh, the opacity of the exposure is just by pressing one of the number keys on my keyboard. So one is 10%, two is 20%, three is 30%, and so on and so forth. Oh, and 0% is 100. So let's go ahead and press continue, or press play to continue. There we go. And now we are done -zo. So that's looking really good. And again, I'm not interested in the, or not, what is it? Not interested. What's the word? I'm not satisfied with the sky that I picked. So let's go ahead and go back to that and pick a different sky. Now, I really should add a dialog box that says select a suitable sky just so people aren't confused. Um, I probably will do that before release, but in this tutorial, I just don't have it set up right now. So let's go ahead and move it like that. Oh, that's looking great. Perfect. Selection is perfect. And that's pretty much it. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments, anything, just let me know in the comments section below or go and add me on Facebook. My Facebook is Hunter Lomaesva, L-O-M-A-Y-E-S-V as in Victor A. Um, that way you can message me. I respond pretty quickly to my Facebook messages, although it can take a little bit longer for YouTube messages as I don't uh, check that very often. So with that being said, oh, one thing else is another thing, I guess. That sounded weird. One thing else. Okay. Go ahead and um, like the Facebook group, or not the Facebook group, the Facebook page, and then go join the Facebook group. That way you can have some more support from other users in that use Seamless. Um, they are pretty good at what they do, and they will comment on, let's say, let's say you have an image and you're wondering, okay, why isn't it selecting the tree here? Um, you can go ahead and post a picture, post a very descriptive description, doubling up on words, and you'll generally reach someone pretty quickly that wants to help. Um, you'll probably reach me first, but there are other people in the group that are willing to help. So with that being said, have a good day. And yeah, I don't know how to end things. That's pretty much it.